Hey, Dish Act Jack here. Anyone know a shortcut to help you save water while doing the dishes? Just let them pile up in the sink. <laughs> nope. Eat off the floor? Uh, no. Don't rinse your dishes before putting them in the dishwasher. What a crowd! Not pre-rinsing can save thousands of gallons of water and about $135 on your electric bill every year. So scrape low to run your dishwasher regularly. It'll save you time, money, water, all those things. Visit cleanwaterservices.org slash dishwasher. WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key. Home of Southern Sports and Talk. Noonan, Sharpsburg, Franklin. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Text and catch the bus. Text and miss your stop. Wait, 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 wait. Text and be late to work. Sorry, I'm late. Text and work. Text and pretend to work. Text and act surprised when someone calls you out for not working. <clears throat> Me? Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. <sighs> Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Ugh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You hear music. Do the lyrics speak to you on a deeper level? I'm Bruce Thornton. Join me and Donna Wood every Friday morning at 1030 a.m. on WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key, for our show, Lyrical Wisdom. Every week, we will dive into the lyrics of songs and uncover hidden messages that we hope will leave you feeling inspired and enlightened. We know that our ideas may not always line up with yours, so this show will be an open discussion. Email us with ideas for songs at lyricalwisdomshow at gmail.com. That's lyricalwisdomshow at gmail.com. Let's share some wisdom together. In the market for either buying or selling your home, City First Mortgage Service, LLC, is the first place for all your needs. Ranch manager John P. Lewis and his staff can serve you with a smile and professional courtesy. Serving Georgia, Alabama, Florida, 770-598-0860. John P. Lewis, City First Mortgage Service, LLC. We place you first. Are you looking for guidance and direction? Stop on by the House of Light Tuesdays from 12 to 3 and have tea and tarot with Christy. The House of Light is located at 29 Jackson Street in Noonan, Georgia. Call 470-414-6711 for more information. The House of Light brings clarity to your soul, offering a safe space for healing through our compassionate practitioners, services, classes, and wisdom, plus the tools to support you in our retail space. It's now time for the House of Light presents the Wisdom Cafe. Each and every week at this time on 99.1 FM WQEE. Here's this week's special. Good morning, everybody. This is April Nouveau. I'm here with my friend Linda Pidd. And we have a little topic we're going to discuss today called Cultivating Deep Spirituality Through Simplicity. Uh, Complexity is a modern plague. Would you agree with that, Linda? Uh, Yes. Yes. (laughs) And complexity tends to separate us from ourselves, one another, and from nature as a whole. Uh, We're adding things to life all the time. You know, we need more of this, we need more of that, we need this new thing and that new thing. We're downloading this app and this program, and we're on this social media uh, platform and this one, and and now there's a new one, we're going to go on that, and then there's podcasts, and the list goes on and on. And that just creates complexity, and I don't think as natural humans we're actually designed to handle complexity very well. Would you agree? I would agree with that. Yes. Um, So it's antithetical to authentic spirituality because spirituality requires us to be present. And when we fill our lives with that much complexity, we're we're not present. We're, We're off in some other world. And people are wondering, you know, why am I stressed? Why do I feel depressed? Why do I feel disconnected? I'm so connected, right? Right. Why do I feel so disconnected? Right, because we're connected in all the ways the modern world says we should be. And that's not really authentic connection. Right. And so it's kind of (laughs) (laughs) soul-killing. Yes. Uh, You know, I was the other day sitting, I had an appointment, I was sitting next to someone and he struck up a conversation with the gentleman next to him, and I'm, you know, an eavesdropper because I'm bored, you know. <laughs> and so, but I'm listening to him, and he's, 
and the, the one man was older. He was probably in his 70s, but he still works like 10 hours a day. He has like a painting company. And he was so joyful and so hyper for an older person. And the younger guy was just kind of like, oh, I can barely handle life. You know, it was just, and he was, he was really paying attention to what the older man was saying about, you know, filling his life with things he enjoys. He, he works all day and then he comes home and he paints creatively the rest of the evening. Wow. And probably one of the happiest persons that I've seen in a very long time. That's so interesting. Well, and he's also doing something with his hands. I yes. think there's definitely something to that as well, like the simplicity of doing things with our hands. You know, we don't really even do that anymore except, like, type on a keyboard or yes. something. The thumbs, our opposable thumbs are the most busy um, part on our bodies now. <laughs> and uh, the rest of us kind of gets neglected. It's just waiting there to do something that's creative because we are here to create. We are co-creators with creation yeah. and um, being so disconnected from ourselves and from our inherent nature I think produces a sense of isolation yes and from a from a place of insul uh, isolation we cannot actually even see the whole right uh, that's the difference between Eastern philosophy and Western philosophy Western philosophy looks at the parts and it disregards the whole the whole person the whole being um, and we've lost touch with the whole. And I think a lot of people are kind of feeling called back to simplicity. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. There's a lot of people becoming homesteaders and <laughs> homeschoolers and things like that. Growing a garden. Yes. Uh, going out hiking. Mm-hmm. You know, going into For nature, sure. sitting by water. Yeah. You know, connecting uh, with the earth because we are part of earth. Um, Absolutely. You seem to have forgotten that. But I think... I think we're all starting to wake up to that a little bit, and it's kind of exciting. Yes. Definitely. You know, when you think of the word simple, you know, I don't know, this is generations ago, uh, when they would call somebody simple, it was an insult. Right. They were saying that they were not intelligent. Uh, but I think we need to reframe that, because I think simple is brilliant. Agreed. Yeah. So even Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain something simply enough, you don't understand it well enough. And I'm probably butchering that quote, but <laughs> pretty close to it. Pretty close to it. Uh, clarity is simple. You know, when I'm clear. Yeah. You know, and I'm only clear when I'm connected to myself. I'm only authentic when I'm connected to myself. Right. Can you think of some examples uh, other than maybe what we've listed that are further complicating our lives these days? Oh, God, my mind is blank. <laughs> yeah. um, like, we've talked about social media a little bit, but even our jobs, the fact that we all live so far apart from one another. Mm. Um, like, I was with my family yesterday, and we have so little time together, and some of that is just because of the nature of, like, living separately and um, having completely separate lives with working and... You know, we used to be more tribal and work together on things, mm -hmm. live in close proximity, and obviously we have, like, FaceTime, which can connect us, which is nice, but um, there's definitely, I think that's a layer of complexity that wasn't around previously that we're now having to deal with. Yeah, there's something about being in the physical proximity of another human being Yes, that is um, important to, I think, our health. Mm -hmm. Our, you know, our spiritual health, our mental health, our physical health. There's something about touch that's really important. Um, and all of these things, although it, they say they connect us, Zoom, you know, Skype, uh, FaceTime, fa you know, Facebook Live, whatever, you know, the list goes on, right? Um, they've actually served to kind of disconnect us. And I feel, I feel like the human soul has become ill. And now a lot of us are going, we don't want, we don't want this. So what are some, like, what comes to mind when you think to yourself, okay, I see that life is complex. What are some things I could do to simplify my life? Um, one thing I've been practicing for the last couple of years is going for walks outside. Mm. Um, even if it's just five minutes, 
Mm-hmm. Um, and even if it's on a busy street, like as long as there's sky, you know, yeah. like you're still in nature. And so I try not to look at my phone. I don't have music mm-hmm. playing. I just try to be in the moment and listen to the birds and pay attention to the trees, the clouds, things like mm-hmm. that. And, um, that has brought me a lot of, um, simplicity and clarity and really does, connect me back to myself Mm -hmm. in times when I'm feeling very disconnected. That's beautiful. Yes, nature is, I think, by far the best way to reconnect to ourselves, to one another, and to to nature ourselves, is just by being present in nature, Uh, because our environments are so far removed from uh, what is natural. And sometimes, if I, like, can't go for a walk or can't go outside if I'm stuck at work all day inside at the computer. Um, sometimes I just remind myself that I'm nature mm-hmm. and allow myself to take a deep breath and remember that like, just cause I can't be outside <laughs> where I feel like the nature is, but like I'm nature too. And I bring nature into this room, into this yes. building. Um, and that helps too. Let's talk about the breath for a minute because I think that's, you know, I was a massage therapist for over 20 years, and one of the things that I observed with people is that they wore their shoulders as earrings practically, <laughs> you know, and what that indicated to me was that they, did, they were not practicing diaphragmatic breathing, they were, they were using their shoulders to breathe, mm. and it's such an unhealthy thing to do, but when we're hunched over a computer all day, you know, that's, that starts to kind of naturally occur, the body kind of conforms to whatever positions we put it in for a long period of time. So one of the things that can help with that is deep diaphragmatic breathing and preferably outside because indoor air is is not very healthy. Outside air is, you know, a couple years ago I had to take my oxygen levels and I would check my oxygen, you know, the little pulse oximeter inside and then I would go outside and the numbers would go up dramatically. Wow, that is so fascinating. Yeah, so I mean that really showed me in a tangible way how, you know, because I'm not a chemist, I'm not going to analyze, you know, right. <laughs> things in the air, but I mean the particulates that we're breathing inside all day are not, not really great for us. We're, we're, you know, part of the animal kingdom, we're supposed to be outside breathing uh, oxygen. Right. So breath work, um, whether, you know, outside preferably, I think is a really good way to kind of simplify your life and connect to yourself. Yeah. And cultivate, you know, a a deeper spirituality because there's just something very divine about breath. Right. Yeah. The other thing I think about is stuff. Oh, yes, stuff. Yeah. So, you know, that uh, props to the minimalists because I think they started... A good movement. I mean, we don't really talk about them much more. I know they've got a podcast, but the idea of us owning stuff and stuff not owning us. Right. And I think a, a good purge, you know, and then really looking at something, is this adding value to my life? Yeah. And if so, how? And do I need to hold on to it? And that's definitely something I've thought about a lot over the years. Um, my mother is definitely a minimalist and she likes to get rid of everything and so (laughs) in reaction to that i am a pack rat and i keep anything that has any sort of sentimental value at all but over the years i have moved a lot Mm -hmm. and it sucks to pack up (laughs) that much stuff (laughs) and so i've had to really examine okay like how much does this really mean to me but and so i feel like i I definitely don't fall in the minimalist category, but I feel like what I do have is really meaningful to me and brings a smile to my face when I see it. Um, And obviously that's not true all the time. I do go through times when I have to get rid of things Mm -hmm. because it's too much, but but I do try to have things that just are very meaningful to me and that definitely helps a lot too. And sometimes if things are feeling crazy in my head, like if I just clean and make things organized, mm-hmm. that helps a lot Feels too. Feels good getting yeah. out of clutter. Well, it's not so much about being an aesthetic because I mean, no, no, you know, offense to aesthetics. If that's, if that's what floats your boat and makes you happy, do it. 
Um, but um, it's really like what you said is, is, does that bring me joy? Yeah. Is, is that meaningful to me? Because I think for most of us, we have a lot of things that just kind of take up space. Yeah. And that's not just things. Sometimes it's um, relationships. Oh, beliefs. Beliefs that, you know, uh, ideas, mm -hmm. uh, attachments, yeah. things like that that are taking up space in our lives where, um, you know, there's just no, there's, there's nothing there that's, that's meaningful or bringing any joy to us. Right. And those are all really good, uh, you know, uh, places to practice inquiry. And I think when, for me, like when I get to a place where I'm like, nothing has any meaning anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that happens fairly frequently. Um, <clears throat> I try to remember what is something that typically brings me joy mm. and often, and then going and doing that thing or like, yeah. You know, I had a moment recently. I've been trying to remember what I loved doing as a child. Because mm. um, I don't have a whole lot of memories of that, really. Mm -hmm. But um, one of them is definitely reading. Mm. And reading for fun, not yes. reading for knowledge. Yes. Because I definitely got sucked into that. Like, yes. I love reading, and I can learn things if I read. But then it feels like, oh, I have to use this time appropriately so I should be reading something that will give me knowledge instead of something I just enjoy yes because that would be quote unquote better for me yes um and I have recently started reading novels again mm -hmm. and it it's amazing the amount of joy it brings to my life mm -hmm. and I think is part of that cultivating simplicity and deep spirituality like it connects me to that part that brings me joy and I think that's a huge part of spirituality Oh, I would agree. I, I, fiction, in particular, causes your mind to almost like it goes into a creative process, where you know I've read books and and then they make them into movies. But my version of what I read oh, is so my different. own. Yeah. You know, so then they have this actor that stars in the show that's based on my book, and I'm kind of disappointed because <laughs> I got attached to the one in my head. <laughs> yes. And the beautiful thing about fiction is that creative process. Like you can engage parts of the brain that are creative. And it's, it's relaxing and, you know, you can't wait to get to the next chapter. Mm -hmm. And when we shortcut and we make a series or a movie out of it, you know, you're not really involved in the creative process. Someone else is. Right. So there's a lot to be said for reading fiction. I'm, I have the same problem. I have like most 80% nonfiction in yes, my library. me too. <laughs> and, um, you know, and that's got, you know, there's a place for that, but that's only engaging the intellect. It's not engaging the creator, yeah. you know, and that's what you really want to do because that is what children do. They play mm -hmm. and, you know, you can call a child simple, but they're a lot happier than most adults. Yes. So, you know, we can, we can be like children and engage in those things and have joy and have fun and simplify our lives and reconnect with ourselves. And it's life changing. Absolutely. I just took not quite, almost a month off of social media today was my, I was going to come back on August 1st, but I have some classes coming up in August and September that I felt like I needed to let people know about. Um, but I took a, a good chunk of time off of social media and I have to say, I almost had withdrawals for like a week or two. Like I, I felt kind of depressed, <laughs> <laughs> but then it started to be so relaxing. You know, I, I started to, uh, my senses started to pick up on things that they had hadn't previously uh, you know, picked up on for a while yeah. uh, because I was so distracted by, by social media. So, so, um, deep spirituality can be cultivated by simplifying life. So, you know, if you're out there and you're thinking to yourself, I feel so disconnected. I feel disconnected from my creator. I feel disconnected from myself. I feel disconnected from our, our culture or society. What can you subtract from your life? Let that be a course of inquiry for you today. So, anyway, um, 10 minutes, okay. <laughs> Here I was trying to subtract from the show. I'm like, <laughs> so, um, so, you know, that's, that's, is it physical things? Do you have too much clutter? Is it maybe, you know, shopping too much, buying things you're never going to wear or use. 
Um, is it spending too much time mm -hmm. on social media or even the news? I mean, that's a big black, deep, dark hole <laughs> <laughs> some days, you know. Yes. Uh, you know, the impetus is to keep you watching. So, you know, the mind has a negative bias. And so what do they do? They have to put out things that will shock you and get your attention to draw you in so that you continually pay attention. And so many of us fall into that trap and then find ourselves feeling kind of, you know, down. And, well, of course we're down. It's like, you know, Armageddon every day. I mean, you know, like every time you turn on the television. And, uh, you know, that's that's very hard. Yeah. Definitely. I do not watch the news for that reason. It does not add to my life at all. <laughs> yeah, it's something that we would do good to subtract. It's not that you want to be ignorant about what's happening no. in the world. But I don't think we need to know 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No, and the amount of information you're getting that is irrelevant to your own life is, and in such a negative way, there, I mean, there's other ways they could present all of that. And Absolutely. Like you said, they're just trying to get you to watch it and stay hooked. Exactly. Exactly. It's all about money. It's all about greed. It's all about consumerism. And I think that's really kind of the root of a lot of what's going on. It's not personal, but it is about consumerism and it's about, um, you know, making money. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember when I was a kid, um, you know, I'm old enough to remember when the news was at five o'clock every day. Wow. You know, that was it. Not 24 um, seven, not 20, 15 seven. different channels. And t <laughs> TV was so boring to me. You know, my mom would watch the soap operas and I'm like, ugh, barf. You know, I just <laughs> didn't want to watch that. And so I would go outside and spend my whole day outside and then I'd come in and you know, we, she'd be making dinner and my dad would sit down and watch the news and I'm like, ugh, barf. You know, like it just like had no appeal to me whatsoever. And I think I had a pretty good childhood uh, with myself, you know, just being a kid, being out in nature, playing, playing with other kids, you know, and our children even are now today are, you know, TikTok has captured them. And, uh, you know, that's their news. Yeah. And it's just, you know, story after story after story and that keeps their attention and they don't get to be kids like we were, you know, and so we need to, that needs to change. Um, I think we're beginning to develop enough awareness about the consequences of those things and perhaps we can be more proactive in protecting our kids. Yeah. yeah. I think even their lives have become way overcomplicated. Yes. Um, all the different activities they're supposed to be doing and, um, I mean, eight hours of school uh, and, um, yeah, it's, it's amazing how different like one thing i noticed recently is uh so vbs is big in the summer right yes. and um when i was a kid vbs was always in the morning mm -hmm. yeah. and now every sign i see it's in the evening yeah. and i am aware now like how many like stay-at-home moms there were back when i was a right. kid and there are not now yeah. um and not that that's i mean women can work obviously and moms yeah. can work and they can have full lives. But it's just interesting that, like, these kids probably have to go to daycare all day, and then they get to go to VBS, yeah. you know? And um, so it's just interesting seeing how different lives are. Even just for me, I'm only 34, um, and my childhood is very different than the way the kids are growing up these days. I think I was one of the last generations to get to, like, play outside unsupervised. Yeah. Which I can't believe it now. Like, I'm like I would never let an eight-year-old just, like, go out of my sight into the woods. But yeah. that's what we got to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I actually think it was very beneficial. But It is very beneficial. It's hard to imagine now. It is. It is. I mean, and I think that the kind of the fear-mongering that goes on in the media... You know, this happened. Oh, tune in at five. You know, this child fell out of an enormous tree and into a pool and drowned. You know, <laughs> you know, there's just these stories all the time. Um, and yes, bad things happen, but the sensationalism around it really provokes a lot of fear in parents. And then we feel like we have to helicopter our children because there's like a boogeyman around every corner. Yeah. And that's really unfortunate. You know, that's unfortunate. We used to go camping with a family from uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, quite a bit and uh, we would bring the helmets for our kids and the knee pads and elbow pads you just threw their kids out there with a bite and said see ya you know? <laughs> <laughs> and they thought we were crazy you know and I'm not advocating I think safety is a good thing but 
we have really kind of overdone it and our children need freedom to explore and, and to connect with nature and to just play, Yeah. you know. So simplicity is brilliant, it really is. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on, on children. <laughs> but listen, everybody, please, just really take an inventory of your life. If you're kind of struggling and feeling down and disconnected, what is it you can subtract? What is it you can take away that might make your life fuller? I know that's very par- much a paradox, isn't it? <laughs> but paradox, truth life is Life is very found. paradoxical. It is. Truth is always found in paradox. So, thank you. You've been listening to The House of Light Presents, The Wisdom Cafe on 99.1 FM WQEE. The House of Light, a wellness center at 29 Jackson Street here in Noonan, is a place for people to relax and find true healing. For additional information, 407-414-6711. Remember to tune in next week for another healing message from The House of Light Presents, The Wisdom Cafe, right here on 99.1 FM WQEE. Trying to grab all the groceries in one trip? Oof, not how you would have done that. You know sometimes less is more. Like when you drive less and save with the USAA annual mileage discount. USAA. Get a quote today. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.